Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime Dag here again. Today we're going to be checking out a brand new budget contender when it comes to the GPU market. This is known as the Intel A580. These are coming in anywhere from $150 to $180. The one that I have here, which is the ASRock Challenger version, was $160 over on Amazon. And personally, I think it's well worth the price. This thing is actually putting out much better performance than I ever imagined, given that we've got a $160 GPU. And if you take a look at new GPU prices right now, you'll notice that this is coming in much lower than the RTX 3050 and even the Radeon RX 6600 non-XT variant. This card is definitely not marketed as a 1440p card, but there are AAA games that we can actually play at 1440p ultra settings, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. But I definitely wanted to give you an overall look at the card itself. Now we've got the ASRock Challenger version, and if you're familiar with ASRock, you know they kind of go all out with the cooling systems. We've got a beefy heat sink here. The fans don't need to spin up that fast to keep this thing nice and chilly, so it's actually a really quiet card also. One thing to keep in mind here is this does require two 8-pin PCIe connectors, but when it comes to the overall specs of the new Intel Arc A580, we've got 24 XE cores, 6 render slices, 24 ray tracing units, 384 Intel XMX engines, 384 XE vector engines, a 2400 MHz average clock on this version here, now they state the base is 1700 MHz and ASRock's website actually lists this as 2000 MHz, but we are at 2400 MHz with this unit, 8 GB of 256-bit gddr 6 VRAM, and to get the best performance out of this, it does support PCIe Express X16 4.0. When it comes to the rig I'm going to be testing this in, it's definitely overkill for this A580, but I wanted to make sure we didn't have any kind of bottlenecks. Basically, what I've got here is 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 7200 megahertz. We've also got the new Intel i7-14700K overclocked to 5.6 gigahertz, an 850 watt cooler master power supply, and I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro. Okay, so I'm actually super excited to get into some testing here, but before we do, just want to mention a few things here. Uh, with these Arc GPUs, we do have access to the Arc Control Panel. You can set this up for automatic updates. From the game section, we can pre-configure a few different settings for each of these games. We can actually add more if we want to. This just automatically scanned what I have right now. Performance section would come in really handy for a card like this, especially the Performance Tuning section. So if we look up here, we've got a GPU performance boost. From this, we can go up 100 megahertz. Now, in all of my testing, I didn't do any overclocking on the clocks at all. Basically, the only thing I changed here was the core power limit. So out of the box, this is set at 150. And even at 150, it does boost up to 2400 megahertz. Now, it's advertised as 2000 megahertz on ASRock's website. And on Intel's website, 1700. I take this up as high as it'll go, 180 watts, just so I know for sure that I can get those clocks. And once that's applied, that's basically all I've done here. And I'll show you here. I've got GPU-Z. Go to our sensors right up here. We've got that GPU clock. And it jumps up to 24. And throughout gaming, it will stay at a steady 2400 megahertz. Haven't seen it drop or fluctuate in there using Afterburner. But I guess this here just isn't enough to stress that GPU out completely to bring it all the way up. But yeah, I mean, it is working with a much higher clock than originally advertised as. Now, the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this. And when it comes to OpenCL performance in Geekbench 6, we scored an 88,247. And as you can see from this chart here, it is putting it behind the RTX 3060 and the Radeon RX 6700 but it's putting it above the RX 6600 and the RTX 3050. Actually, quite a bit above the RTX 3050, and you gotta keep in mind, this card is $160 to $180. Next up, 3D Mark with the Night Raid benchmarking. And you gotta keep in mind that total score is really gonna reflect the CPU and GPU, but with this setup here and that i7-14700K, Total score, 73,045, and her graphic score was 114,672. Firestrike came in with a total of 27,438, graphic score, 28,418, and finally, Time Spy, total score, 12,410, and a very respectable graphic score of 11,573. So far, it's actually performing much better than I thought it would, 
But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to get into some real-world gaming. Okay, so the new A580 is not marketed as a 1440p card, but there's actually a lot of games that we can run at 1440p. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, ultra settings, no resolution scale, so I'm not using any kind of FSR or XESS. This is running absolutely amazingly. And by the end of this run, we got an average of 89 FPS. Seeing how well it ran at 1440p, I wanted to try 4K, so I did at Ultra, kind of fell on its face. We had an average of around 54, but I dropped it down to medium and then got an average of 71. So you could play this at 4K medium, but it is a very well optimized game. Next up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, Ultra, no resolution scale. We never dipped under 60, we got an average of 73 FPS. So it's really nice. I mean, we could definitely play it like this, especially turning V-Sync on or just locking it right there at 60. But of course, adding a little bit of resolution scale would definitely help out. Shadow of the Tomb Raider built-in benchmark, 1440p, no resolution scale, highest settings. We got an average of 72 FPS. It's an older one, but I always like throwing in this benchmark. Here's God of War, 1440p, high settings. I did try Ultra, but it fell under 60 at 1440p. So my recommendation would be, you know, adding a little bit of FSR here or just taking it down to 1080. Because at 1080, high settings, you can average around 81 FPS. So far, everything's been working pretty well at 1440p, but a couple of these didn't do a great job and it really comes down to driver optimizations and game optimizations because one that didn't work out as well as I thought it would was the new Forza Motorsports. Here it is at 1080 high settings, and I do have V-Sync locked at 60, just trying to keep it there, but unfortunately we get those dips, and sometimes it dips way under. I've had a lot of issues with this game and Arc GPU so far, so hopefully those issues will be ironed out in the future. Cyberpunk 2077 did absolutely amazing. Here it is at 1080p high, and you gotta keep in mind that the stock high setting does introduce some resolution scale using Intel's XESS. It's set to automatic. I think we're at about balanced right now at 1080, but in my opinion, it still looks great and it's playing just fine. Now, given the kind of performance we're seeing here, I figured we'd go ahead and try to take this up to 1440p. Not exactly sure how well it's gonna work out, but heading into the settings, we're just going to take this from 1080 to 1440. And it's still playable. At 1080, we were getting an average of around 83 FPS. At 1440, we're getting an average of around 71. But I do want to mention it again, XESS is set to automatic. And right now, I think it may have dropped down to performance to get this kind of performance at 1440p. Either way, I still think it's amazing that we can play this game at 1440 on a $160 card. And the final game I tested here was Starfield, and if you're familiar with these ARC GPUs in this game, you know they don't mix very well. We're at 1080p medium and lots of FSR on. I'm getting an average of around 42 FPS in the city. These are really hard to run areas. But I checked online and saw that people were getting really bad performance with this game and this GPU. So I wanted to make one change here. We're going to go to low and then back up to medium. So we're going to go right back to the same settings we were just using. And as soon as I get back in the gameplay, we're now only averaging around 28 FPS. So there is a driver bug going on here. Uh, this is really odd. But as soon as I make any changes in the settings, I have to reboot the game to go back to that kind of performance. I also wanted to test out a little bit of planet exploration. Same settings, 1080p, medium. And this is from a fresh reboot of the game. It's right there at around 61 FPS on average. But as soon as I go into the settings and make one change, it'll go down to an average of around 28, even during planet exploration. So that's one of those bugs that definitely needs to be ironed out in the drivers. So overall, very impressed with the performance of this ARC A580 card. It's really not that bad for a brand new $160 GPU. And Intel does have more to gain from driver optimizations than the other companies out there, AMD and NVIDIA. Since they're brand new to the market when it comes to these graphics, they've constantly put out driver updates to increase performance. And I mean, in some games, we've seen up to an 80% increase in performance 
going from an older first release driver up to a brand new driver. So yeah, I mean, they've got a lot to gain here. And I know performance has been getting better on all of their art cards for most games out there. Personally, I do think that this is a great value if you're looking for a brand new card. But, you know, if you don't want to deal with ARC, you can always go with NVIDIA or AMD. That's the great thing about the market we're in right now. We've got a ton of choices. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you are interested in learning a little more, maybe pick one up. I'll leave some links in the description. And if you want to see anything else running on the A580, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.